Welcome to part four. Bud then goes back to his home where the bride lies in wait. She very slowly sneaks up to his front door, but he gets the drop on her by shooting her with rock salt. Well, hey, we're getting closer to somebody actually shooting someone in this movie. Imagine that. All the talk about whether or not he still has the Hanzo sword handy, but what do you know? A gun works just as well. You know, sometimes characters are developed outside of a musical number or dialogue or something like that. Sometimes the kinds of violence they commit tells you a lot about their character. Do you want to know why I use a knife? Guns are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. In, you see, in their last moments, people show you who they really are. So, in a way, I knew your friends better than you ever did. Why does she use a knife? Because he's a sadist. Why does she use a samurai sword? Because she's a samurai. It's not enough that her opponents have to die. They have to die in honorable combat, and when the light goes out in their eyes, the last thing they have to see is a better person than them. Why does Bud use a gun? Because deep down at the core of his personality, there's a flaw. He's a cheat. He didn't want to best the bride in open combat. He bet his life on a trick. And yeah, the bride could have seen through it, and the bride could have slipped in behind and tried to kill him in some clandestine way, and he, he probably he probably would have accepted that. He's not a coward. Don't dodge guilt, and I don't chew out of paying my comeuppance. Can we just forget the past? Bad woman deserves her revenge. But he is a cheat. He bet his life on a trick. And without going into expository dialogue, without some kind of weird flashback scene, I can tell you with 100% certainty that this is the core of the conflict between him and Bill. Bill isn't a cheat. Bud is. This frustrates Bill and Bud equally. That's why they can't get along. And this is why he's doomed to take shit from some perverted little cokehead. Yeah, yeah, Bud could have been one of the best swordsmen in the world, and he probably is. But when it came right down to it, he bet his life on a shotgun and a trick. That's who Bud is. That's who the bride is confronting. Again, it's not so much about the expository dialogue. I, I, I don't even know what you think this movie should be about, really. This is about a woman killing people and explaining the people whose lives she's snuffing out. Bud then calls up Eyepatch Lady, who so far has just been background in these movies, and explains the situation. Eyepatch Girl apparently really wants that Hitori Hanzo sword, so a sale is made with the stipulation that the bride must suffer till her last breath. So the bride is then taken to a once occupied grave, and now comes to find that she will soon be occupying it herself. The next scene is something that I've never really seen before. This isn't a buried alive scene, it's a buried alive simulator. So as the bride has nothing to do right now but sit there and die, which is kind of how I feel just watching this movie at this point, we flash back once again to a moment between she and Bill. Now, keep in mind that this is the first time we've seen a scene of she and Bill together in a good context. I don't count the beginning wedding scene because that actually ended up turning out to be a bad context. This scene is in a time where the two got along very well together. 
And this context is, once again, just being dumped on us in an arbitrary place. There is no rhyme or reason to the structure of these scenes. You came so close! No! This is not just a scene for her. This is a memory. And you are correct in the sense that this is a buried alive simulator. We are supposed to feel what the bride is feeling in that situation, which is pure horror. But instead of doing what you or I or anyone else would do in this situation, which is panic and claw at the coffin and rip our fingernails out and all that other kind of crazy horrible shit, she does the one thing that could save her life. She doesn't panic. She calms down and rationally thinks through how she got to this situation and what could possibly help her. And she literally digs herself out of it. And that makes this particular scene even more frustrating because it just doesn't belong here. The bride is currently in a really bad situation that we all want resolved, and now we have to take time out to watch these two sit around and tell long, boring stories about characters who are merely a footnote in this movie. Empathy is experiencing what the other person is feeling. Yeah, I I'm sure the bride wants out of that coffin too, but she took the time to take a breath and think about her situation, and Quentin Tarantino expects the audience to do likewise. Boring, boring, boring. Get the hell on with this. There is no reason why we need to hear all of this other than to learn what Pai Mei is like and what to expect from him when she gets there. When not only should this have been Bill and the Bride's bonding scene, but even if it was, it shouldn't have been here. Maybe I'm just in a bad mood tonight, so take this rant with a grain of salt, but I have the relationship skills of an undertaker drunk on turpentine who hasn't bathed in six months. And I can speak volumes about what's going on in this scene. Most of communication is not verbal, or at least isn't dialogue. What matters in this scene is how they are speaking to each other, their postures, their tone of voice, how they communicate. You really shouldn't need buckets full of expository dialogue to explain the characters. You're smarter than this. This is where the first movie should have opened. Fuck the exposition about Pai Mei. This scene should have opened the first movie with just Bill and the Bride bonding and exploring what their relationship was like. That would make this a movie primarily about heartbreak and sorrow, not anger and revenge. If you don't like the tone, fine, but it is not an objective flaw of the film. And here's how everything should have played out from then on. The movie in the present should have been the bride tracking down the people on the list in the order that I said in Volume 1. The only flashbacks we should have seen from then on should have been flashbacks of Bill and the bride during good times like this. Fuck Lucy Liu's backstory, she wasn't even in the movie. This is the only backstory we needed. Because in that case, as we go back and forth from Bill and the Bride having a good relationship to the Bride wanting to take revenge, it raises an actually interesting question. Instead of keeping the mystery of what Bill looks like in the first movie, the mystery Tarantino should have created is why the Bride wants to kill Bill at all. Alright, I needed a fresh drink for this shit. God damn. Oh, God. Maybe I should have put a little bit more mix in my vodka. Oh, God. Anyway, um, let me get this straight. You want a movie in which the bride has serious qualms about killing a mother. In which we see copious scenes of the bride sopping over Bill. In which we see how wonderful and loving her relationship was. And then later we kind of see some epic acts of destruction. Although presumably greatly diminished and shortened. Okay, what do you think the themes are 
of this movie. Keeping in mind the movie's new focus is the bride's mental hang-ups about killing people and how great her relationship was. Since the audience yearns for catharsis, what kind of ending are they going to expect? What kind of ending are they looking for? What is the new tone of this movie? The themes of that movie would be love, redemption, and forgiveness. What in the fucking hell makes you think Quentin Tarantino would make a movie with those themes? They're not anything like a Quentin Tarantino movie. That's like a Baz Luhrmann movie. For fuck's sake, man, you are watching Quentin Tarantino. This is like berating Rob Zombie for not making a romantic comedy. What the hell did you expect? And to make matters worse, these are the exact themes the bride has to confront in her final showdown with Bill, which is a lot more emotional than physical. I, I, I understand that you don't like the movie and you therefore weren't paying that much attention, but God, this is frustrating for me. Going back and forth from getting along to a want for revenge without any context in between would have made the very title of these films compelling. Why would anyone who had this good a relationship with someone want to kill them? What could have possibly happened that brought all this about? It's not the why that's interesting. It's the bloody rage that is. Well, don't worry, because in the third movie, you know what shows up? The Death Star. Awesome, man, that fucking... Wait a minute, what is it doing, George? Well, you just see it at the very end of the movie. It's being built, and Darth Vader's just kind of looking at it. <laughs> Again, I don't care how they built it, or how they put in the toilets or the air conditioning, I just like it when it's done and then it's blowing planets up, that's kind of what's cool about it. You look really sad. I, dude, I gotta say, I'm pretty fucking sad, man, that sounds awful. I, that, that all just sounds like shit. Would you like some ice cream? I, I would, yeah, I would like some ice cream. I like ice cream, man. That'd be cool if I had like a, a dish of ice cream. Well, here's a big bag of rock salt. <laughs> you just said I was gonna have a dish of ice cream. Well, when you combine the rock salt with ice and cream and sugar and flavoring, it becomes, I don't give a shit where the stuff I love comes from. I just love the stuff I love. Hey, do you like Angelina Jolie? Does she give you a big boner? Well, here's John Voight's ball sack. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eye Patch Girl arrives at Bud's trailer, and then we see the bride arrive at Bud's trailer, only to see Eye Patch Girl arrive at Bud's trailer again. She and Bud share a long and boring conversation about nothing. I'm sure you do feel a little bit of both, but I know damn well that you feel one more than you feel the other. And the question was, which one is it? Regret. Yeah, I mean, in a movie about killing people, who really cares about the emotional impact of the killings on the killers and who these people were to each other and what it actually means to them to know that they're dead and that they caused it. Um, they, that, you know, that would just build their characters and therefore add emotional resonance for the audience when we see them die uh, because, because this is an actual person we're killing and not some random bystander. Um, you know, like, let, instead, let's have long, sappy dialogue about how your relationship didn't work out in a movie about killers. Yeah. Continued in part five.